The most common complaint by far that I have heard about cable TV news for the last three years now is that allowing Donald Trump rallies to go out live to viewers from beginning to end is delivering a poison to the bloodstream of the nation. And I've always agreed with that criticism, but now I'm not so sure. And once again, it is New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman who has gotten me to think about maybe changing my mind. And I say once again, because Thomas Friedman is one of the, is one of the modern masters of counterintuitive thought that can actually shake my firmly held opinions. In his latest column, Thomas Friedman says that televising Donald Trump's rallies is the right thing for the news media to do professionally and, quote, it is the right thing to do politically if you want to see a check on Donald Trump's power. It appears that it's the toxic lying, bullying, and unpresidential behaviors that Trump exhibits most in his rallies and tweets, which we in the media so incessantly cover, that is turning off the very moderate, best educated Republicans and suburban women that Trump will need to hold the GOP majority in the House, let alone get reelected. So bring on the coverage. Tom Friedman makes the point that even with a strong economy, Donald Trump's approval has not increased since he was elected. He has not converted any of the voters that did not vote for him. Tom Friedman writes, the very applause lines and abusive and divisive behaviors that appeal to his base turn off more moderate and more educated suburban Republicans and do nothing to attract independents or conservative Democrats. Tom Friedman's conclusion for the news media is, quote, I want wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Trump's every speech, rally, tweet, and utterance because they most reveal his character, and Trump's character is the ceiling on Trump's presidency. And joining our discussion now is Thomas Friedman, New York Times foreign affairs columnist, Pulitzer Prize winner, and the author of the best-selling book, Thank You for Being Late. Late. And Tom, I believe you began this segment uh, with this audience with approximately zero uh, agreement <laughs> to your <laughs> position, but maybe some of what I just quoted uh, is pulling people in your way. And I have to say, your column really unmoored me. I, I, you, you make a very strong case. Well, I appreciate it, Lawrence, and, and um, it was a surprise to me because I, 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 was, I watched the Senate election in Alabama where, where Jones, um, the Democrat, you know, won coming out of nowhere. Uh, you watched the, the by-election in Pennsylvania. You watched uh, uh, the one in Ohio, um, and, and the one in Ohio was most striking because this was a district that had not sent a, a Democrat to Congress uh, in over three decades. It's a district that Trump won by 11 uh, percentage points, and um, uh, the Republican candidate, um, Balderson, seems to be winning by, by uh, at the most one. So something clearly is going on here uh, that has eroded Trump's base. And, and um, uh, you know, I often start, uh, Lawrence, by interviewing myself. And, and what do I feel? And what I feel is when I watch these rallies, when I, when I see these tweets, um, uh, I, I feel appalled. I, I feel appalled as an American by the divisiveness, by the toxicity. I feel ashamed to see a president attacking um, such a, um, a high quality American uh, sports stars, LeBron James, after he's opened a school for 400 impoverished kids. And I think this is, um, it, it turns out, Lawrence, that there, that there are moderate Republicans out there. Uh, there are independents, there are clearly suburban women who are deeply turned off by this. And they voted um, uh, with their feet. They voted with the, uh, by pulling levers. Uh, it's showing up in the polls. They've kept the lid on Trump's support. Um, and I think if we deny them, uh, you know, this sort of, uh, the access to the president, the full Trump, um, I, I think we're not doing our job professionally, but also uh, as someone who believes it is essential that there be uh, a check on Trump's power for the last two years of his presidency, at a minimum, democratic control of the House, I think it would be a mistake politically. Now, you make the point in your column, uh, something that I, I heard Mike Murphy say last week, I think possibly in a tweet, hmm. that the way to cover the rally is to just set up one camera for all of the networks to get the feed from that one camera. Do not send reporters into that pen, that cage uh, that the Trump campaign and now the Trump presidency sets up a cage for reporters uh, where they're not allowed to even talk to any of the members of the audience. So there's no reporting function for them to do there. Set up the camera. We all get the video. 
Uh, my version of that is set up the camera. We all get the video and I will show you if the president says anything worth showing to you, which might be something grotesque or might be something newsworthy. Your argument is no. Let it run. Let yeah. people see every bit of it. I, I think there's uh, uh I, I think Trump's a disturbed person. I think there's something deeply disturbing about these rallies. I, I find it appalling. Uh, uh, people reportedly, you know, showing up in a T-shirt saying, I, um, you know, I prefer Russians over Democrats. Um, uh, these are deeply aberrant behaviors, and I think that there are many thinking Republicans um, who are telling us by how they voted. Um, I interviewed in that column Stanley Greenberg, the veteran uh, uh, pollster, uh, who has been running focus groups with Republicans, and uh, this is exactly what he's found, that moderate Republicans are, are turned off by it. Um, some you know, more diehard ones, about half of them are, and that um, even evangelicals, it all reminds them of the Faustian bargain they've made in supporting Donald Trump. And while they're not abandoning him, um, you know, this is not, not redounding to his favor. I, I, you know, there's a, the, the Sasha Byron Cohen's new show on, on Showtime, he, he opens it with these clips, impressive clips of former presidents of the United States saying mm. some of their most famous lines. And then he includes this moment, which we're going to show now, of Donald Trump uh, mim mimicking Steve Kovaleski. This is Donald Trump's entry in that line of presidential comment. Uh, let's listen to this. Mm. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. And, and, Tom, it is absolutely repulsive every time. It is shocking when it yeah. comes at the flow in Sasha Baron's Cohen show at the end of a flow that includes JFK and FDR. And your point is the more the public sees of that, the worse it is for Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I'm a big believer that um, uh, the biggest uh, lid on uh, President Trump is the character of Donald Trump. And, um, and I think this really matters to people. And also, you know, one of the things that's, we've talked about this a little before, Lawrence, the thing you have to remember with Trump too is that we haven't had a crisis yet. There's been no, thank God, no 9-11, no 2008. But, you know, crises can come. And um, one thing we know, we know about Trump is that when a crisis comes, he blames others. Uh, he doesn't take responsibility. And so, you know, all of this is part of, of the man's character. And I think we've been exposed to it now uh, in, in isolation from Hillary Clinton. You know, in, in the election two years ago, people said, well, I'm gonna plug my nose and vote for the guy of bad character because I can't vote for Hillary Clinton and I think she is a bad character. That was enough to pull enough moderate Republicans over the line to just get Donald Trump to squeak through. But now we've had two years of the full Trump. And I think a lot of people understand that this is a personality and this is a person uh, who needs to be checked. I, I don't know if there'll be enough. It depends, obviously, on the Democratic candidate in every district, in every state, and ultimately having a leader of the Democratic Party. You can't be something with nothing. And, um, uh, you know, that will have to come down the road. But I think character matters. And this is another thing, I believe. And maybe it's just the Minnesota, uh, Minnesota nice Midwestern uh, boy in me. But I think Americans really want to be pulled together. I don't think they like being divided like Sunnis and Shiites. Um, and I, I, I don't say all of them, but I think there's a constituency there. And when you think of how narrowly Trump won some of these Midwestern states, boy, it doesn't take a lot of Republicans to stay home, just to stay home, let alone vote for a Democrat, uh, you know, to tip uh, the next presidential election and maybe a lot of these districts. Tom Friedman, the column is must read as always. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate Pleasure, it. Pleasure, Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you.